Hey guys, Mike here from Lunch Money Comics, and today I'm at True North Ale Company in Ipswich, Massachusetts. Not for the awesome beer or barbecue, but because today they are actually having a comic book show inside. So we have beer, barbecue, comic books, and the football game is going to be on. Sounds like a pretty awesome day to me. Let's go inside and check it out. Nice. You should definitely stop and have a, uh, a sip of something. Hey guys, I want to introduce you to someone who's very important to me and also important to the channel. This is my best friend, also named Mike, my oldest friend. I've known him since uh, first grade, since we were six years old. Not only is he my closest friend, but he also designed the Lunch Money Comics logo. Thank you very much. Which I'm going to put right here if you guys know which one it is. So uh, thanks, Mike. Great job. Everyone knows who you are now. Good job, buddy. <laughs> thanks, buddy. Let's go have a beer. Yes. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. Cheers, bud. Nice. Very nice. Love this. All Dave Stevens covers. Pretty sweet. Love this one. First print? Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. <laughs> so it's complete. Yes. But. But it's detached. But it's ju there. It's just the center folio. Pages. Oh. So it's the center fold plus. Eight pages. But they're missing. Plus enough missing. Missing, missing, yeah. 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 Right. So I kind of last side, I'm like, am I like... Hey, Sean, thanks a lot, man. Good deal. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. <laughs> 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 How you doing? How you doing? Wow, thanks so much. Jeff, I appreciate that, man. That's for my son. Awesome, buddy. Thank you so much. Appreciate Absolutely, it. Absolutely, dude. I'm a big fan of the channel. Oh, that is awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right, guys. I'm here with my buddy Josh, who's the coordinator of this amazing event. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the show, Josh. So this is our first time um, doing the show here at True North uh, Ale Company in Ipswich, Mass. Um, I've done uh, a show in Concord, North Carolina at a brewery down there with uh, buddy Chris Rigo um, for like the past seven years, um, and it's been a success, so I moved to New England, and I'm like, let's do it here. So uh, we've got 20 uh, plus vendors and artists, um, comics, toys, Pokemon, uh, you know, all the stuff that us... Uh, us fellow nerds like so, plus barbecue uh, beer and barbecue, the patriots game is on and so the Pats are playing so best show i've been to uh in recent memory man a great job i hope you guys do this every single year we are planning on doing it again so awesome uh, that's for awesome coming out and um, we appreciate right. everybody who supported us look for it next time guys i'll definitely promote it this is an awesome show having a great time thanks josh appreciate thanks, it buddy <laughs> wow just keeps going so we get the uh, food truck over here, and then we have more comic books that I didn't even know existed. So we gotta check all these out. I hope they get it picked before the storm comes in, because it's moving in fast. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Wow, this is beautiful. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, this is gorgeous. Wow. Nice, nice book. All right, let's get some barbecue. I'm excited for this. All right, buddy, it looks pretty amazing. Yes, it does. And we got the Patriots game. Happy day, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> How am I going to eat this thing? <laughs> Yum. Go for it. That is a nice bite. 
got to get in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. My New, New England geography is terrible. <laughs> yeah. Everything's close. That's all you can remember. That must have got a good one. Ooh, or a bad took, one. I took a breath. That never happens, right? Sorry, buddy. Oh, no worries. All right, guys, that was an amazing venue to have a comic book show at. I had beer, I had barbecue, I had football, and I ended up with a pretty awesome Silver Age key. Let's go home and uh, show you guys everything that I got and tell you about this amazing experience that I had. So is it possible to have too good of a time at a comic book show? Probably not, but this one was pretty close. That was the first ever Clam City Comic Con, and it pretty much had everything. It was in a brewery, they had barbecue, NFL football was on, and of course they had plenty of awesome comic books. And that would have been enough for me guys, but I was also there with my best friend, and it was in the beautiful seaside town of Ipswich, Massachusetts. A town very near and dear to my heart because I actually lived there for 10 glorious years. And I loved living there. Not only do they have one of the most beautiful beaches in all of New England, it's an incredibly historic town. Uh, it's actually one of the oldest settlements in all of North America. They have something like more first period 1600s home still standing there than anywhere else in the United States. They have one of the oldest bridges in the United States. They have an awesome museum. And I know this because I worked in the museum for years. So guys, not only was it a great comic book show, but it kind of felt like going home for me. It was put on by my buddy Josh from Buzz Comics. You guys saw him in the footage. And uh, Josh has been planning this show for a long time because uh, not only is he a big New England comic book seller, he works at this brewery and he had this crazy idea to sort of combine all the things he loves, comic books, beer. Oh, and he's from the South, so you know he loves barbecue. And uh, it was a great idea and people responded really well. Not only did he get lots of great comic book vendors, but people literally drove from all over New England to check this out. And I tell you guys, by the time the game started at one o'clock, that place was absolutely packed. Whether it was people hunting for comic books inside or outside, at the barbecue truck or in the tavern side, it was absolutely jam-packed. And I had such a great time, uh, not just looking at comic books, but mostly talking with people. I was talking with other vendors, I was talking with people you know, who watched the channel, you know, having some fantastic food. Such a great time, maybe too good of a time, that I only ended up buying one comic book. That's it, one comic but it's a pretty awesome one. So before I show you what it is, if you like this sort of stuff and you wanna support the channel, head on down, like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, follow me on Instagram under Lunch Money Comics IG. Oh, but before I show you the comic book, there are some people that I need to mention. Like I said, I met a lot of amazing people and I don't have time to shout them all out. So if I met you at the show and we had a conversation, thank you so much for stopping and saying hi. I absolutely had a blast. But there are a few people that I need to mention by name. The first one is a gentleman named Jeff from Silver Whistle Collectibles. And Jeff actually called me over as I walked by his table because Jeff watches the channel. He watches Lunch Money Comics. He likes it. Uh, and he just wanted to say hi. So I love meeting people who watch the channel, guys, and getting feedback. He was a really nice guy. We had a great conversation. And eventually we started talking about like what we're currently into. And I happen to mention that my son isn't so much into comic books right now, but he's going way down the rabbit hole of Magic the Gathering cards. At which point, Jeff reached down and handed me this Pokemon box full of Magic cards. I didn't even see this at his table. He was selling uh, these as a bunch, and he gave this to me to give to my son. And I tell you, Jeff, when I gave this to my son uh, later on in the day, his eyes lit up. He was so appreciative of this. The whole drive home, he was going through this box. So. Thank you so much for giving this to my son and also for watching the channel. Uh, it was very generous of you. Uh, you're a great guy. Uh, the next person I want to mention is actually Josh himself because at the end of the video, you guys saw that I was looking at a pretty expensive book, Amazing Spider-Man number 129, The First Appearance of the Punisher. That book actually belonged to Josh and his partner and I was actually trying to see if I could trade for it. I brought a couple of small boxes full of things that I was willing to trade or sell. And uh, yeah, so they started going through it. Ultimately, they needed uh, cash for that transaction, but Josh found a couple of books that he wanted for his PC. 
um, and he actually paid me cash for them. So I was really happy to give him some books for his personal collection. And hey, you know, I made a little bit of money on the side. One of the books I sold him was uh, one of the She-Hulks that I recently got. I talked about it in a previous video. I was worried I spent too much for it. Well, Josh needed one and he was happy to pick it up. So it all worked out. And the last person I want to mention is the vendor that I got this book from. He was a guy named Sean and he was from Comics CT. And I've actually met Sean before because he runs in that same circle of comic book vendors in Connecticut as like three men in a basement. All those really great guys I met at a previous show uh, this year. Very similar show, by the way. Um, and he was just a really great guy. But not only was he cool, the biggest thing I noticed was his books were priced incredibly well, um, his wall books, I saw like five things that I wanted. I saw, you know, first Poison Ivy, Missing the Centerfold, but still great price. But I saw this book and it was priced really, really low. Um, and for reasons I'll tell you in a second, you guys saw it in the footage. And I'm just going to show you right now. There it is. This is The Amazing Spider-Man number 20. It is from 1964, although I think it's cover dated 1965. Uh, and this book is so early that it was written by Stan Lee, but also the art was still done by Steve Ditko. And of course, this is the first appearance of Mac Gargan, aka The Scorpion. I love Spider-Man. I love Silver Age Spider-Man, even though his books are very pricey. And I love, of course, his rogues gallery. I like the Scorpion quite a bit, but mostly the reason I like this book, guys, it's just such early Amazing Spider-Man. It really is amazing. Now, the price he had on it was $150. So when I saw that, I knew there was something wrong with it. Uh, he actually made me guess. He's like, what do you think's wrong? I thought maybe detached cover. He said, no, the only reason it's really knocked down that much and that it's sort of in that good plus to fine minus range is that the center folio is detached from the staples. I do not care about the center folio being attached, guys. It happens a lot on older books and it presents great. And you know, if that's what knocks that price point down, I'm totally happy to pick it up. Um, yeah, and you know, it does have you know a lot of you know wear on the edges. It does have a pretty big spine roll right there. This bottom staple is a little spooky. It is still attached to both staples. There's only one chip missing down in the corner. Otherwise, they're just kind of like little folds. Guys, what a great deal. I'm happy to get a first appearance of a Silver Age Spider-Man villain for that price. But not only that, my buddy Mike was going through Sean's short boxes and saw a comic book that he really wanted to have because it gave him all the nostalgia feels. And it was Captain N, the Game Master. Now, a lot of you might have no idea what that is, but for those of you who that grew up in the late 80s, early 90s in like Nintendo, you might remember that cartoon. It was a cartoon about a kid that gets sucked into his Nintendo console and interacts with like all the Nintendo games. Basically, you know, a cartoon that was a big commercial for Nintendo. Um, but they also had a comic book series put out by Valiant. Mike saw that book priced at $30. So when I turned to Sean, I said, would you take both for $150? And he pretty much cut me off. He's like, yeah, of course. So I don't know how you guys want to figure that out. Either I paid $150 for this and Mike got that for free, or I paid $30 and got this for $120. It doesn't matter, guys. I think that's a great price for this book. It presents great. Honestly, I was so happy just with this book. I didn't need any other books uh, to add on that day. I'm very happy to have a Steve Ditko first Spider-Man villain appearance in my collection for a great price. Really was a fantastic sort of capstone to a fantastic day. So as you heard Josh say, they plan to have more Clam City Comic Cons in the future. I think they actually want to have two a year, which would be awesome. I will absolutely be going to them. So if you are in like the Northeastern United States and you want to check it out for yourself, keep an eye on my channel. You know I'll post about it either on my YouTube channel or on Instagram. As a matter of fact, I will just uh, put a link to Josh's Instagram down in the description and right here on the screen. Follow him yourself and you can see all about the next show. One more thing I want to add, guys. Um, I tend to prefer smaller shows in general. Um, not only do you get better comic book prices, but they feel more intimate. You get to meet the people, you get to talk to them. It doesn't feel as sterile or as daunting or intimidating as the bigger shows with the more expensive books. You feel like you're more part of it and uh, you really do make friends with these people. This show reminded me of a show I went to earlier this year, The Three Men in a Basement Comic Swap in Connecticut. Very similar vibe. It was in a very unique place. In that case, it was in actually in a barber shop. They also had food trucks, they had drinks. And when you're in those types of environments, guys, you feel like you're just hanging out with some like-minded friends. And oh yeah, there just happens to be some comic books here. Um, and I feel like when you're a part of the show, um, it really does go a long way in making you feel a part of the hobby. So Josh, I commend you wholeheartedly 
for absolutely uh, giving the show that vibe. I mean, it was absolutely an awesome experience. I think everyone who was at the show agrees. I just commend you wholeheartedly. Great job. I cannot wait for the next one. Uh, that's it, guys. Keep hunting for comic books in strange and unusual places, as well as these small local comic book shows. You can meet some great people and pick up some pretty cool comic books. Thank you all so very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.